Tammy, it would seem very hard to believe that somebody could find that bridge because even some of the locals that do live here and have lived here didn't know how to find it. But several things come into play in that. One of those is that the old road system was taken out and an interstate was put in called the Hoosier Heartland. That was on an extensive project where even I had a hard time figuring out where the old roads and the new road connected because some of the cutoffs were moved and you had to go another, another way. So it it feels very hard to believe that somebody that had not lived here at some point or did not currently live here could easily stumble upon this area. But I have been out on the roads fishing uh, in a, on a neighboring bridge and a couple of guys stopped and said, hey, do you know where to find X and X bridge? And I was like, oh, okay, well, that's this place. But to get there now, you would have to take, if you didn't know the area, it'd be very hard to stumble on it. It's just that far out. And people that lived here for years said, I never knew that bridge was there. I mean, I've heard people talk about it, but I didn't know where it was. So it's kind of a 50-50. It seems more probable that it's somebody that did live here or currently lives here as to the location of the bridge. Because there's a lot of talk about a trucker, but you were saying it's not really that accessible or common for truckers? <sighs> for that particular road... I mean, if there was a detour that you had to go around, you might go there, but it still would lead you to other roads in a roundabout way. Like if somebody was, um, we have a lot of fields here in Indiana, a lot of corn, a lot of beans. If nobody's hurt, Indiana. Hmm. Um, if you were dropping off or delivering, which you would not be in February, it would seem unlikely that a semi loaded down with anything would be on those roads. Uh, the basic answer that we have is what we were told um, when we were brought in to see the second sketch is we've run this first sketch. We feel like we know who this person might be or we've cleared up this particular person. And now we're going to look at another person that other people also noticed might have been there that day. And now we'd like to talk to that person. Um, if you were in a bank or in a gas station, it was robbed. The 10 people in there with you are all going to see something different. None of us see the same thing in a situation. Happens a lot. So there are a lot of sketches that were put together. And then at the end of the day, this one was the number one that most people felt comfortable with. And then the second one was the one that everybody else also thought could closely resemble or was another person. So they ran through everything they could up until, I'm going to say mid- April of 2019, I believe, is when that sketch came out. We had the second big press release of the sketch. And we'd already had the audio and video at that time of the different things available. And that was when the sketch came forward. And um, at that time, they said, we're changing directions. And now we want to see who else may have seen this person because we've talked to everybody else concerning the first person. And uh, it was very confusing. And it was like, wait, we've put all this faith into this first sketch for all this time. This is who we thought we were looking for, and now we've changed our minds, and they're like, no, we just want to know who else was out there that day and go over this. So, not a complete dismissal, but a change in direction. A positive picture that was um, made up here within the last couple weeks. Uh, we believe it is the same person that you see in the picture down below. Uh, we're wanting people to not notice the hat, because if you notice the hats are not quite the same, what we're trying to do is deal with the facial features that you see on the picture there, that's what we're looking at. That's what we want people to focus on. Uh, we don't need people, you know, telling us that, you know, the flaps down in the other picture, well, now you know why. We want, we want you to be able to see the face, be able to look at the face, and focus on the face, so that's what you're, you're dealing with in this, in this, uh, in this photo. Uh, basically, this, is, this photo was taken, or was, was made available uh, through the investigative efforts of the police departments involved in this case, the state police, the FBI, Carroll County Sheriff's Department, uh, Delphi Police Department, and many other departments that have assisted uh, over the past four to five months in trying to solve this case. Uh, the composite was made up uh, by uh, the, uh, uh, the combination of all the departments coming together uh, and, and getting this information uh, through uh, people that were there, people that we've talked to, uh, information that's come in on the tip line and information that's come in on the, uh, the uh, email addresses to get this composite that we have today. As of today, the result of the new information 
and intelligence over time leads us to believe the sketch is the person responsible for the murders of these two little girls. We are also releasing video recovered from Libby's phone. This video has never before been previously released. The video shows a suspect walking on the bridge. When you see the video, watch the person's mannerisms as they walk. We are releasing additional portions of the audio recording from that day. Please keep in mind, the person talking is one person and is the person on the bridge with the girls. Guys. We also believe this person is from Delphi, currently or has previously lived here, visits Delphi on a regular basis, or works here. We believe this person is currently between the age range of 18 and 40, but might appear younger than his true age. We believe you are hiding in plain sight. For more than two years, you never thought we would shift gears to a different investigative strategy, but we have. We likely have interviewed you or someone close to you. We know that this is about power to you. And you want to know what we know. And one day, you will. So two different things. Um, one, some people took advantage of a lot of our family members in the early stages. And I do know what you're talking about, about my brother specifically, who was a volunteer firefighter at the time. Um, but the same thing that I talked to you is that so many things that happened in the early stages when we thought two little girls were grounded for a year because they were hiding out somewhere that didn't actually happen. Um, we could have stopped a lot of that if we weren't so actively out helping and looking. I personally was at the firehouse a lot of the time uh, waiting. Waiting very patiently for these two little brats to show back up and be grounded for the rest of their, life. rest of their lives. While other family members were actively out there. Um, rumors started so very early that my brother felt compelled out of his anger to probably try to clear up things and probably shouldn't have tried to help because it made things worse. Uh, some local retirees. We've had a mayor that's changed job. Uh, chief of police has changed the courthouse. There was a couple of months where there was a uh, uh, of folks leaving and shifting jobs and a very close friend of mine and I when it would come up I was like are we rallying is something big about to happen or do we just like circumstances come up and jobs change and that's what it is circumstances and jobs change it uh, it seems hard to believe that you know some of the folks retiring but Riley has done a great job for a very number of many of years he has worked so many cases and he's probably due for this retirement. He has been, uh, much like the rest, has been a wonderful blessing to this family um, throughout this. Um, we've had the pleasure of visiting with him on and off camera, um, on the investigation and on personal notes over dinner throughout this all of us. He's traveled with us um, amongst uh, him, Holman, and, and so many others that we've been gracious enough to be personally in our hearts. These people our family. They think about us the way they do about their children and their grandchildren. And that is the blessing of a small town. And uh, it's it's difficult, but uh, not because we're worried of some big underlying scheme of allegations of this, that, and the other thing where people are being booted out because they didn't do a good job and they covered things up. It's it's a small town and mayors are mayors and then they move on and chief of police get to do other opportunities and then people get to retire someday.
Um, so if we, we don't believe that they did. We have nothing in, uh, concerning any social media accounts because the FBI did all the backgrounds. Um, nothing indicating in, in when they popped up, when Libby took the picture of Abby on the end of the bridge, and then where we have this audio thing going. Is there any indication they're like, oh, that's so-and-so, that's somebody's brother, that's so-and-so's uncle. That's Mr. So-and-so. They don't seem to have any inclination. Um, we know that a lot of family members have been brought up in this. We're well aware of that. We deal with that every day. But if the girls knew it was my Patty or Cody or my dad or a family member, I feel very certain that they would have said, oh, well, what's, what's Uncle Dave doing out here? What's Grandpa Mike doing out here? The girls didn't seem to have any of that with the the video or audio or any of the pictures they've taken to indicate that, you know, so-and-so was trying to play a prank on them or was being goofy with them. It, it didn't seem anything like that, that they did not seem to be aware of who it was that they were with or was near them. So they were they they released first the get down the hill, then later the guys, right? Because I saw some people saying it was all together one sentence. I'm saying it wasn't. What do we know as far as that for sure? I've I've heard I've read all different things, so I want to get it from you to make sure what they've said to where they said it's not even worth messaging. Let's not care what the girls might have said in that huh what you know excuse me type situation. It was a legit hey guys, and then down the hill. 